All right, so we've got a really fascinating deep dive ahead of us today. Yeah. Um, you sent over a bunch of stuff about OpenAI's O1. Right. And even just skimming, it's obvious this is a big deal. Yeah, it seems like it. They're calling it a paradigm shift. Like, they're not even calling it GPT-5. They're resetting the whole numbering system. Yeah, they're really hyping this one up. And OpenAI doesn't usually get that excited, do they? No, they're usually pretty measured. So that says something. Exactly. But I have to admit, when I first saw the demo where O1 codes the game snake, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, that's cool, but GPT-4 can already do that. I know, right? Like, where's the revolution? Right. But then I dug deeper, and wow turns out that's like bragging about being able to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich when you can actually bake a seven to your wedding cake. Totally. There's so much more to it. So what really sets O1 apart then? What's the secret sauce? The key is something they call chain of thought reasoning. Chain of thought. Okay. Yeah. See, with previous models, like even with GPT-4, they were amazing at recognizing patterns in huge data sets. Yeah. Making connections. Sure. But O1, this is different. This is designed to actually think through problems step by step. You're saying it actually thinks like we do. More or less. Yeah. Like when you're tackling a tough math problem, you wouldn't just try to do it all in your head at once, right? Well, I mean, some people might try. Uh-huh. Sure, some people. But with a really complicated problem, you'd want to write it all down, break it into steps, try different approaches. So you don't miss anything. Exactly. Yeah. O1 is like that. It's thinking on paper, so to speak. That's wild. So it's not just connecting the dots, it's figuring out why those dots should be connected in the first place. Precisely, and that's a fundamental change. And that change, you're saying, is what lets O1 do things no AI has ever done before. It opens up possibilities we haven't even thought of yet. So this is about way more than just faster or more efficient AI, this is. This is how AI learns, mm -hmm. and that's what's so revolutionary. I'm starting to see it, yeah. Okay, so O1 can reason, it thinks like we do, but can it actually walk the walk? Well, that's the million dollar question, right? Right. And that's where these benchmarks you sent over come in. This is where it gets real. Uh, OpenAI actually put it through its paces, didn't they? Seriously impressive stuff. They even threw O1 into a real coding competition. On Code Forces, yeah. yeah. That's a platform with like thousands of human programmers competing. No kidding. Wait, so they had O1 go head to head with real people. That's gutsy. How to do? It crushed it. Scored in the 89th percentile. Well, on 89th percentile, meaning it beat out 89% of the human competition. Outperformed most of them, yeah. That's insane. Are you kidding me? It's not just some coding savant, though, right? You said it aced some high school math Olympiad, too. Yeah, blew right through it. Yeah. And that's one that GPT-4 could barely even pass, by the way. Wow. Okay, so it can code, it can do high-level math, anything else? Oh, yeah. This is where it gets really interesting. In some of these science challenges they threw at it, O1 actually surpassed PhD level accuracy. Okay, now hold on a second. PhD level, what kind of science stuff are we even talking about here? We're talking complex problem solving in physics, chemistry, stuff like that. Things that require more than just knowing the facts. You have to be able to apply them, to think critically. Exactly. So it's not just that O1 has access to all this data, it's that it's actually demonstrating a deeper understanding. Well, we have to be careful about how we define understanding. It's not necessarily understanding things the way humans do. Right. It's still a machine. But it's able to recognize complex patterns, apply strategies, make deductions, all based on the massive data set it's trained on. Okay, so incredible results for sure. But we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves and assume O1 is thinking just like a human. Definitely not. It's a powerful tool, don't get me wrong. But it's still a tool. So how does all of this thinking on paper, all this reasoning, how does that actually play out in the real world? You mentioned the cipher puzzle, said it was a good example. Oh yeah, this one's a great illustration. Okay, hit me with it. Yeah, so tell me about this cipher puzzle. Why'd you pick this one? Well, honestly, because GPT-4 totally failed at it. Really? Like, couldn't even get close. Nope, but O-1. Totally different story. Okay, so how to crack it? Walk me through it. So it basically approached the puzzle just like a human would. First, it analyzes the cipher text. Right. Looking for any patterns, anything that stands out. OK, makes sense. Kind of like code breaking 101. Exactly. Then it starts trying different decryption methods one by one, ruling them out as it goes. So it's not just randomly trying stuff. It's and actually it's thinking strategically. But here's the kicker. Yeah. We could actually see it articulating its reasoning as it went. What do you mean? Like it was explaining what it was doing. Yeah. It wasn't just spitting out an answer. It was laying out its logic step by step, saying things like, this pattern suggests X, so let's try Y. 
It was incredible. Hold on. So you're telling me you could watch Owen's thought process in action, like you were looking over its shoulder. In a sense, yeah. You could see the different possibilities it considered, the dead ends it hit, even when it went back and tried something new, like watching a detective solve a case in real time. That is both amazing and slightly terrifying, you know? I get it. It's kind of spooky. But this idea of being able to see how Owen is thinking, that has to be huge for AI safety, doesn't it? Huge. OpenAI calls this hidden chain of thought, and they think it's key to building trust and making sure AI stays aligned with, you know, human values. Yeah, because if you can actually track how it's thinking, you can spot any weird biases, any errors, maybe even malicious intent before it becomes a problem. Exactly. Transparency is key. This is definitely making me rethink what AI can be. But just being real for a sec, this level of AI, it's got to be crazy expensive, right? Something only these big tech companies and labs can mess around with. You'd think so, wouldn't you? But here's where things get really interesting. OpenAI also released something called O1 Mini. O1 Mini, like a smaller version, but it can still do all this crazy stuff. Let me put it this way. O1 Mini is designed specifically for coding and STEM tasks. And in those areas, it performs almost as well as the full-size O1 at a fraction of the cost. Okay, so they're actually trying to get this power into the hands of more people. Who are they aiming this at? Developers, researchers, educators, anyone who can benefit from next-level problem-solving and automation. Really. I can already imagine the possibilities. I mean, this could totally revolutionize software development, scientific discoveries, so much potential. But where does it go from here? Is this the peak? Have we reached the pinnacle of AI? Well, remember, OpenAI already hinted it working on an even more powerful successor to O1. Wait, more powerful? What could possibly be more powerful than this? I mean, where do you even go from here? That's the question, isn't it? And that's what makes this whole feel so exciting. We're in uncharted territory. O1 is a major step, sure, but it's just one step on a much longer journey. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us to ponder exactly that. How might O1 and whatever comes after O1, how might that impact your work, your life, even your own creative process? Because one thing's for sure, AI is evolving at a breakneck pace, and we're all along for the ride. Until next time, keep diving.